ready whenever you are. Okay, um, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, let's take roll call. Mr. Hilsinger? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Elliott? Here. Ms. Hancock? Here. Ms. Hart? Here. Mr. Cunningham? Here. So we have a total Hilsinger, of six. You have six. At this time. Although, okay, yes, that is the quorum for tonight. Our newest commissioner is not here. She is not on yet, but I will, I'll watch for any of the rest of the okay. commissioners to join in. Uh, we will welcome her to uh, the planning commission whenever she gets here. So yes. uh, with that, we need a motion to accept the meeting minutes from the executive meeting March 4th and the meeting minutes for the public hearing March 11th. So moved. We have a second. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 6 0. Um, we do not have a status sheet. No committee reports. So we'll go to the first new business item, which is PC 08 24 Omaha Collision Company. All right, good evening, commissioners. This is PC 08 24 Omaha Collision yeah, Company awesome. LLC, a request for an amended development in C8 Plan Commercial District to permit the use of a vehicle repair facility. This is a 4.04 acre tract on the south side of Manchester Road, approximately 1,500 feet west of Mason Road. This site is in West County and on the aerial is bounded in red. On the larger aerial, you can see the site on Manchester with commercial activity characterizing both sides of the street. This is a request for an amended development in the C8 plan commercial district to allow for a vehicle repair facility. This site was formerly Gedeker's furniture store and still retains the facade and lot structure. The building on the site is 35,430 square feet and features a loading area in the rear. There's also parking on the western side of the parcel. In 2011, this site was the subject of PC 30-11 Asbury Automotive Group, a request for an amended development in C8 to allow for a vehicle sales and repair facility on the property. This was adopted by County Council in January 2012. However, this use was never developed and the Gettigers building remains. So this site and many surrounding are zoned C8 plan commercial district. This allows the planning commission to have greater flexibility in the design of the site and the conditions of development. In the preliminary site development plan shown at public hearing, the petitioner indicated reuse of all of the existing structures and entrances at the site. The petitioner is proposing a 2,700 square foot building addition to serve as an intake and office area. The existing paved parking lot would be restriped with 161 parking spaces and parking lot islands would be introduced. The south side of this parcel is an existing detention basin in the flood plain of Grand Glaze Creek. No changes are proposed. The petitioner also noted that the Missouri Department of Transportation has planned work along the site to replace and widen the existing sidewalk along Manchester Road. Uh, the petitioner also submitted a preliminary landscape plan with extensive landscaping along Manchester and on the parking lot islands. There are a total of 47 trees and 376 shrubs and grasses depicted. Again, no changes are proposed to the detention basin. And finally, the petitioner submitted preliminary architectural elevations depicting the exterior of the building. At public hearing, the petitioner emphasized the office-like structure and commitment to matching the existing materials of construction on the existing building. The department is recommending approval of this request. A vehicle repair facility continues to be an appropriate use at the site and is consistent with other uses along Manchester Road. Additionally, the materials shown at public hearing are generally sound. The department is recommending three re revisions to the site development plan seen at public hearing. First, the department agrees with MoDOT's recommendation dated February 8th to close the eastern curb cut. The petitioner indicated that traffic volumes for this proposed use are low. 
So the closure of a curb cut on Manchester Road would create a safer pedestrian environment. This would also be compatible with MoDOT's upcoming planned work to the, improve the safety of the site. Second, while there are no requirements for buffer yards between two commercial sites, the department is recommending a landscape buffer along the western property line to further improve the appearance of the site. And finally, the department recommends replacing the existing sign in the property with a monument style sign to reduce visual sign clutter on Manchester Road. Um, at this time, I would like to call for a motion. Mr. Hilsinger, I would note that um, Ms. Williams, Mr. Fagan, and Mr. Bedell have joined the meeting. All right. Um, we'll welcome our newest commissioner to the Planning Commission. Hope you enjoy it. So, with that, we'll uh, continue on. Um, we need a motion on PCO 8-24. Make a motion for approval. Second. We have a second. Second. This is Sandy. Uh, discussion. Anyone? And Wayne, just to confirm, that would be with the recommended SDP revisions. Right? Yes. Okay. Right. Any discussion? Anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. Uh, what's your count now? You have all nine members at this point. Nine. Nine. Okay. Irveta, Miss Williams, did you want to cast a vote, or you could you could abstain at this time? I just want to make sure I have that clear on the minutes. I think you might be muted. Oh. I can't hear you. We can count Miss Williams as a as abstention for this evening. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. We'll change the count to uh, eight to eight. one. We have no old business ready for action. Uh, we'll go to old business letters for approval. First item. PC 03 24 Black Tree Association LLC. Good evening. PC 03 24 Black Tree Association LLC. It was a request for a conditional use permit in the R5 and floodplain R5 residential district um, for a proposed use of a private non for profit recreational land uses, including outdoor recreational sports fields and associated lighted athletic fields for 14.12 acres. Located on the northeast and southwest side of Mount Olive Road, approximately 260 feet west of Marchie Drive. Um, this is coming to you tonight as a letter of decision, which is consistent with the commission's um, vote from March 4th at your executive session. Okay, we need a motion. So moved. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Okay, discussion. Seeing no one, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 801. Uh, next item PC 05 and 06 24, DP 244 East LLC. Good evening, Commissioners. This is a letter of recommendation for PC05 and 06 24 VP244 East LLC, a request for change in zoning from C6 Research and Office District to R6 Residence District with a planned environment unit procedure in R6 to permit multiple family residences. This is a 5.48 acre tract in the northeast quadrant of Thornhedge Drive and Valley Park Road, approximately 100 feet south of Highway 44. As you can see, this site is in Southwest County and on the aerial is bounded in red. This larger aerial shows the single family residences to the south and the commercial uses along Highway 44. As commissioners may recall, this petition was last seen at the March 4th, 2024 executive meeting where the Planning Commission recommended approval of these requests with the following provisions, increased landscaping buffer to 40 feet and removal of parking spaces, increased landscaping buffer with along Valley Park Road, to, oh, 
sorry, I just read that twice. Heightened requirements on lighting intensity within four, 20 feet of Valley Park Road and Booter Park, a traffic study and sidewalk along Valley Park Road, an aesthetic treatment of all proposed structures to maintain the semi-rural neighborhood characteristic. On March 18th, the petitioner submitted a revised preliminary site development plan and a written letter request, which is included in the packet to modify these provisions. So a request for increase in number of garage spaces, reduction in Valley Park Road buffer width, reduction in lighting intensity restrictions along Valley Park Road, and a waiver of the traffic study. On the revised plan, commissioners will note two detached garages and retention of parking spaces within the 40-foot buffer zone. These parking spaces are shielded by a six-foot site-proof fence. In total, approximately 12 parking spaces were removed. The petitioner also submitted architectural elevations featuring decorative cedar corbels and milled finishes. So the department finds the following recommendations reasonable. First, the submitted architectural elevations are a reasonable aesthetic standard and all structures on the site not yet submitted should appear similar. Next, the department has revised the conditions of development to allow for an additional garage structure and parking within the 40 foot buffer so long as car headlights are shielded. Um, regarding the traffic study, the condition remains as directed by MoDOT and the County Department of Transportation. Uh, the intent of the lighting buffer onto Valley Park Road is to minimize light spillage onto the neighboring single family properties. Since some parking spaces will be allowed within 20 feet of Valley Park Road, the department decreased the buffer to 15 feet to allow for some flexibility in maintaining a safe and visible parking lot. And finally, the garages and shielded parking lot spots are permitted within the 40 foot landscape buffer, so no changes are necessary as the remainder of the area along Valley Park Road should still be landscaped to adhere to the original conditions of development recommended on March 4th. The department finds the following recommendations reasonable and consistent with the letter uh, or with the intent of the decision by the Planning Commission on March 4th. So we bring the letter of recommendation to you today with these revisions. Okay, we need a motion. I'd like to make a motion of approval of the uh, planning department's recommendation. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion, anyone? So just to clarify the items that we are in the, that the planning department has changed from their mod modified request. That would be to keep the MoDOT study, modify the lighting buffer to 15 feet. Yeah, so all the things on the right column on are the, right. the recommendations from the department. Essentially, just like you summarized. Yes, but that's correct, Ms. Hancock. Um, a slight reduction in the in that lighting, um, maintain, maintaining the condition requiring a um, a traffic study as per MODA and the Department of Transportation uh, Public Works at their discretion. Um, but those are the two probably the largest changes to the um, to the preliminary site development plan. Okay, anyone else? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it eight zero one. Uh, old business not ready for action. We'll go on to uh, correspondence. Good evening. Uh, this first correspondence is um, for PC 07 24 private home care, um, which was a request before the planning commission for a conditional use permit in the NU non urban district. Um, for a group home for the elderly on 4.81 acres um, on the south side of Lewis Road, approximately 1,500 feet east of Decky Road. They are requesting uh, this evening a withdrawal without prejudice. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to accept. Second. Discussion? The Seeing all those in favor? Oh. Hold on, Wayne. There's a question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. D without prejudice, that means that. So uh, it means, yeah. So basically, what this means is if um, the withdrawal without prejudice allows, like, if somebody else wanted to come onto this site um, within this next year for a different use, uh, 
they would be able to with the come same to the board. Use. Or with the Basically, same Basically, someone could make a request for a CUP for a group home for the elderly here. Um, otherwise, with prejudice would mean they'd be precluded from applying again for okay. a year. So if someone comes in there wants to do the same thing, they would still have to go through the same process exactly. of what they it's, just did. Right. Yes. They would, they would start set, with new what applications. We're, we're not shutting them hearing. down. We're not shutting them down. Yep. Okay. Right. Perfect. It's all Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. H01. Uh, next item communications. Todd Spitzer, BC 26 4401 Merrimack, LLC. So this is PC 26 4401 Merrimack, LLC. Um, this is a request to amend Ordinance 28614. The zoning on the site is a C8 plan commercial district. Um, and this request before you tonight is to amend the ordinance to ad allow an additional vehicle service facility. The track size for the entire property is 7.2 acres and it is located on northwest corner of Miramac Bottom Road and Hawkins Fuchs Road. Um, this site is located in South County and to your right, you can see the site outlined in red. Um, here's a larger aerial of the site. This site is primarily surrounded um, by some single family homes um, and RV sales uh, directly behind it. Um, and then the Missouri American Water Company. Um, so their request is to add an additional vehicle service center. Um, the service center will perform sensor checks on repaired vehicles um, so there will be no wrecked vehicles on the property and they do not intend to do overnight storage of vehicles um, this is the preliminary site development plan um, the site they're looking at is the 4407 e um, is where the site would be for the sensors the 4505 e is the site of a existing vehicle service center on the site so uh, the Department of Planning is recommending approval as continued commercial use of the site is appropriate. The staff, staff also finds that the C8 plan commercial district procedure continues to be appropriate at this site as it continues to provide the county with a maximum control over the development. The proposed use um, of a vehicle service center can be developed and operated in a manner that is not detrimental to the surrounding land uses. The proposed vehicle center is less intense um, than a typical vehicle service center. And this proposed vehicle service center um, will be housed in the rear of the site, which is in keeping with the intention of the original ordinance um, to keep them off of Merrimack um, and towards the back. So at this time, I ask for a motion. I make a motion. Do we have a motion? Second. Okay. First. First was Mr. Elliott. And okay. Mr. Elliott, and then, yeah, and then Mr. Cunningham. Okay. Uh, discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, 801. And the last one is uh, PC 101 77, Edgar H. Coomer. Evening Commissioners, PC01-77, Edgar H. Kumar, is a request to amend Ordinance 8576, which is the guiding document for a C8 plan commercial district. The proposal before you tonight is to amend the sign regulation to be a C3 shopping district on a 5.8 acre track located in the southwest corner of New Horse Ferry Road and West Florissant Avenue. The site is in the North County, and to the right of the screen is the subject site outlined in red. Okay, PC0, PC101-77 was a request for a change in zoning from R2 and R3 residence district to C8 plan commercial district to permit racquetball courts, retail spaces, and a freestanding building to allow all C2 permitted uses. After a series of revisions, the Commission considered the revised site development plan appropriate for the site, hence recommending approval. 
the county council concurred adopting ordinance 8576. Of note is that this ordinance permitted three free standing business signs per C2 shopping district requirements. There have been two amendments to the ordinance. The first was in 1984 to allow C2 shopping district uses related to retail, office and service facilities, excluding service stations or automotive related sales and services, fast food restaurants and green rooms. The maximum height of the building was also amended not to exceed 15 feet. In 2005, the ordinance was amended to allow overnight parking of eight licensed trucks permitted for businesses within the shopping center. The proposed amendment before you tonight is to change the signage regulation of the C8 ordinance to be per the C3 shopping district requirements. The petitioners noted that variances have been granted in 2005 and 2018 to maintain an overall size of 85 square feet and 87 square feet re respectively in lieu of 50 square feet per the C2 shopping district. Staff is recommending approval because the current request aligns with previous variances granted to the property in 2005 and 2018. Allowing the signage per the C3 shopping districts would provide consistency and bring the sign on the site to compliance. And at this time, ask for a motion. We have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Was there, uh, sorry, uh, was there a second on the motion? No, I'll, I'll make a second for on the motion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Let the record show 801, and we'll go on to uh, site plans. Good evening, Commissioners. PC 138-76 St. Francis Development Company is a C8 planned commercial district. Um, this is a 1.97 acre tract on the northwest corner of Limburg Boulevard and Old Halls Ferry Road. Um, as you'll probably recall, this site is in North County and there it is highlighted in red on the aerial. Um, the Commission will recall seeing a an ordinance amendment um, at the earlier this year to increase the uh, size of the convenience store on this site. Um, so the site development sh plan shows a new uh, 2,600 square foot convenience store and eight parking spaces on the site. It also shows new landscape buffer yards along both um, street frontages, which do not currently exist. And here's the lighting plan, which is all in accordance with the zoning ordinance requirements. And so we are recommending approval of this site development plan. Okay. I'll make a motion for approval. We have a second. Second. Okay. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, 801. And then we'll go to 35 and 36 dash 22. EC 35 and 36 dash 22 provision land development was a request for a change of zoning from R from NU to R3 with a PEU in R3 on the 2.7 acres located at the south side of Vance Road, approximately 80 feet east of Strawberry Ridge Drive. As you may recall, the subject site is in the South County, and to the right of the screen is the subject site outlined in red. This is the this slide shows the minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet and setbacks, which are all consistent with the PEU ordinance. Here is a subdivision showing the proposed use for the site, which is for 10 single family detached homes, which are all consistent with the PEU ordinance. And this is also the landscape plan, which is part of this PEU ordinance too. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Yeah, so ask for a motion for approval. 
I move for a motion approval. We have a second. Second, second a motion. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 801. And we will go for the good of the order. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, we got a good one for you this evening. We're going to be talking about planned environment units for our monthly uh, education session. Planned unit developments, PUDs or PUDs, rose to prominence in the United States following World War II and the ensuing era of rapid suburbanization. A PUD is a spe special procedure that encourages increased aesthetic variation and residential density and the preservation of open space within residential subdivisions. This procedure remains common practice today throughout the country. Ordinarily, in St. Louis County, a uh, subdivision of land is governed by Chapter 1005, the Subdivision Ordinance. Uh, design criteria required by that code work in tandem with development conditions dictated by Chapter 1003, the Zoning Ordinance. It's important to note that neither the subdivision nor the Zoning Ordinance permit much flexibility regarding lot width, lot size, and other crucial design features. For instances when proposed residential developments require additional design flexibility, developers can request the planned environment unit PEU procedure. A PEU is St. Louis County's form of PUD and is permitted for residential developments that have five or more lots or units. The PEU procedure allows for increased flexibility regarding housing type, lot size, and structure, structure slash parking setbacks, among other design considerations. A PEU can be used to cluster units to preserve environmental features, such as a creek, pond, or wooded area. Uh, by clustering units, it is also easier to avoid natural constraints, such as steep slopes and sinkholes, and also uh, the PEU may also reduce impervious surfaces. This graphic illustrates the utility of the PEU procedure. At the top, you can see a hypothetical undeveloped parcel. The site is characterized by marshland, featuring a pond, prominent green space, and an active creek. The middle image shows how we would normally expect a residential subdivision to be laid out. However, the environmental conditions of the parcel inhibit this standard design. Utilizing the PEU procedure, the developer can propose single-family single homes on the site in a fashion that both protects the new residences from the area's waterways and preserves the environmental features that make the area uniquely appealing. So how are PEUs permitted? PEUs are permitted in the NU non-urban district and all our residence districts. The PEU procedure does not allow for more units than uh, that is or ordinarily permitted in the underlying zoning district. Residential density uh, for that number of permitted units is calculated by dividing the net area of attractive land by the minimum lot area per dwelling unit of the underlying zoning district. The PEU is containing 40 units or more uh, may include commercial uses in either separate structures or within multiple family residence buildings. Commercial uses shall not occupy more than 5% of the total gross floor area of all residential buildings within the development. The list of uh, permitted commercial uses include barber or beauty shops, child care centers, nursery schools or day nurseries, cigar and newspaper stands, food or drug stores, laundry or dry cleaning pickup stations, self-service laundries or dry cleaning facilities, and finally restaurants, excluding fast food restaurants. Much like with other special procedures that come before the Planning Commission, design standards for PEUs are determined by site-specific ordinances. 
The planning commission may establish conditions that pertain to building and parking setbacks, enhanced landscaping requirements, height limitations, sign restrictions, fencing requirements, and other design features and criteria. When a developer requests the PEU procedure, the planning commission holds a public hearing. Following public hearing, the planning commission makes a recommendation to the county council regarding the request. Ultimately, the county council approves the PEU by approving an ordinance authorizing the development or the county council denies the petitioner's request. Within 18 months of county council action, the developer must submit a site development plan to the Department of Planning for staff review. Following staff review, the Planning Commission approves the site development plan. The site development plan is then recorded. The developer has two years to record the first plat and eight years to record all plats associated with the development. Substantial construction must commence within one year of a plat's recording. In the event the site development plan is not submitted, the plats are not recorded, or substantial construction has not commenced within the prescribed time limits, the planned environment unit shall terminate, and the Planning Commission shall initiate a resolution of intent, intent for the purpose of a new public hearing to revert the property to its prior classification or other appropriate residence district classification. I have a question for you. Uh, so can they ask for an extension for that, like we've done on other ones, or it is a strict timeline? There is a procedure for a request for extension. Okay. And one, one more question, Peter. If can the can this the, the planning uh, department recommend this to a developer, or is it totally in the developer's hands how they want to do that? They want to request I would say I would say regularly staff has preliminary meetings with developers when they kind of come with their conceptual plans. And if there is um, a situation where we think the PEU could be a useful procedure to help them facilitate their goals and perhaps, you know, encourage some things that the, the department is interested in, especially around landscaping um, and varied lot sizes, uh, we will make that recommendation. But ultimately, it's the developer's choice then what they try and pursue. And to build on what Peter is saying, he is correct. That it is, um, we cannot require or force a property owner to go through that procedure. Um, that is a, uh, it is a voluntary procedure. But what I would say is, is that that is where the planning commission and the planning department always entertain um, legally um, appropriate applications and requests. But it is always within the, um, purview of both the department and the commission to analyze those requests. Um, and if they do not meet the requirements or, or sort of the goals of, of the county, uh, it can reject those requests. So we do frequently counsel with uh, property owners to say, while you can make a request that does not include a PEU, it makes your development much harder um, to, to um, make, uh, to facilitate. So uh, we encourage, but we do not require. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. One thing I wanted to add to and why I think it's becomes like it's an extremely popular procedure. If you go back and look at the zoning petitions for the past, you know, 30, 40 years, there are a lot of PEU subdivisions. Um, basically, everyone, you know, has to have uh, stormwater management facilities and common facilities like that have to be located in common ground. And then as soon as you've got a bunch of common ground you need, it starts to eat at that developable, developable land too. So this allows you to sort of retain some of that, you know, density of units, even though you have, you know, less land to work with. What happens if they get halfway through a project and then for, for whatever reason they stop and the time expires and all that and they pull, you said the plats wouldn't be recorded. What happens if people are already living in some of it and the other part isn't fully developed or isn't built out? That's a great question, Mr. Elliott. You know, in the county, 
had a lot of those occur after the 2008 after the 2008 Great Recession. Um, in terms of, uh, and basically the, the the sort of colloquial term is our zombie subdivisions, subdivisions that have either been platted, um, where no home builder will build, um, or the you know all of the common ground wasn't wasn't put in correctly or a developer built half the streets but then abandoned it before they were accepted by st louis county for uh, perpetual maintenance um you know we try to avoid that as much as possible but that is when why st louis county establishes anytime someone does a subdivision whether it is through a peu procedure or a standard subdivision we do collect escrow monies from the developer so that if st louis county had to take over and finish um or we, we our departments wouldn't do it we would contract with someone to uh, make sure that at least the bare minimum of the roads that would service the homes that exist um, meet public standard we have those monies uh, to do so um, but if a developer does abandon the development halfway through uh, we would have to work through making sure that those residents um, are still being serviced with public with public um, services as appropriate um, and sometimes try to help facilitate finding um, individuals that um, would take over that development. I don't know how, about anyone else, but here in Clayton, we are having uh, the tornado sirens. I have tornado. It just, yep. it just started yep. here too in Webster. There in Oakville also. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just I just looked at the radar. It doesn't appear, you know, south like the, the it looks like it's in sort of north central St. Louis County right now, but there's more storms that are moving through. So I don't mind fin if we want to finish up. We just had a couple of extra minutes so that everyone can then get down to their basements. Or if there's anyone that needs to get to their basement right now, please do so. Yeah, they're um, sounding in Eureka now. Yeah, I think that. Uh, the whole counties must be going off. Although from radar, again, it looks like it's mostly confined just north and north, inner north St. Louis County right now. Um, so uh, I would say Mr. Cunningham, Miss Williams, you may be the ones that are the most impacted by it right this second. So yeah, what's strange is I don't hear any sirens. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but on the radar, the closest uh, lightning strike is like a mile away. So Okay. Uh, Jacob, did you want to touch close. on uh, Salem's County 2050? Yeah, there were just two quick things I wanted to to do. Um, first of all, was um, we didn't get to do it at the front, uh, Miss Williams, and I know that you've been having some some audio problems, but I want to welcome you uh, to the St. Louis County Planning Commission. This is a really, really excellent uh, group of individuals who give of their time and talent uh, to help promote. Um, good zoning practice and good planning practice uh, for the residents of St. Louis County. And I, I'm really glad that you're here. Um, and for the commission members, what you should know is that Ms. Williams comes with a really, really wide breadth and depth of experience in planning and zoning. Um, she has worked for various municipalities uh, at, a, at a time uh, about in the early 90s, she also was a, a staffer here at St. Louis County in our Department of Public Works uh, reviewing plans. She does have a background in architecture and she does run uh, and own her own consulting business, um, which does deal with zoning. Uh, but she's got depth of knowledge in, in plan review, housing, economic development. So Ms. Williams um, is going to be a really great addition. Um, and we're really glad that that Ms. Williams is here. Um, and on the flip side of me? that, um, we're you also- me? No. Oh, can yeah, you, I can hear, we can yes, hear you now. Yay! <laughs> I did have questions. I finally figured out this audio. WebEx has never liked my uh, computer tablet. I don't know if Zoom interferes with it or what. So I've sat here and played with some settings. And finally, it's all working. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here and glad to be a part of this uh, St. Louis County Planning Commission. Some of the petitions and some of the site development plans you showed are right around the corner from where I live. So I'm like, yeah, neighbor's credit union. I'm driving past there all the time. So uh, I'm looking forward to being uh, a, a part of, of development and decisions that are happening in St. Louis County. Well, that's, I really welcome. appreciate it. Yeah, welcome. Uh, welcome. Cool, yes. yep, welcome. So, and I did have questions, but, but I'll, Jacob, I'll just ask you those offline later. Okay, that sounds good about the PEU. Sure. No, that's great. Um, the so the so of 
two things of note um, is that the next planning commission meeting is going to be our public hearing for the month of April. Um, and commissioners, you may have noticed that it is an odd date. It is it is set for April 22nd. It's Monday, April 22nd. And the reason being is that we would typically have had it on April 8th. But as you all well know, that's also solar eclipse day. And I expect that there's a lot of folks from the St. Louis region that are going to be uh, heavily invested in that day. So we we're not going to have it on eclipse day. And then for personal reasons in the department, Mel and myself are going to be at the National Planning Conference in Minneapolis on Monday the 15th. So um, there would be no planning, neither the director nor deputy would be there. Um, so we do have it set for April 22nd, in-person public hearing for April. Um, and at that time, we also hope to have a meet and greet with uh, Ms. with Miss Williams uh, here at the county. We'll have some snacks and some food um, so that we can all get together as a in person and, and get to get to meet one another. Um, and also, I want to put it on. We don't have a date yet, but we're working with um, Mr. Sneed to have a celebration of his uh, time on the planning commission. I think we're going to uh, we're going to a restaurant. I think in South County where we are looking at Barolinos. Uh, don't hold me to that until we have it fully set. But that's kind of where we're thinking we're going to have it. And when Mr. Sneed has um, determined the the right date, we've given some dates to Mr. Sneed. We will let all of you all know so that you are all invited, uh, so that we can celebrate and thank him for his uh, dedication to to this commission um so with that i just want to also give the team um a, a little bit of background or excuse me an update on the comprehensive plan so on thursday we had our first steering committee meeting for the comprehensive plan and i thought it went really great dr page came uh to the meeting and uh greeted the greeted the steering committee um it is made up of uh, 25 folks from throughout various sectors in St. Louis County that represent, um, you know, thought leaders in housing, um, equitable um, economic development, sustainability, transportation. Um, they're names that you would know and recognize, and they're not private at all. I'm happy actually to, to give you all the, the list of everyone who's on that steering committee. Um, but we had a really great and robust conversation um, with uh, and getting them acclimated to their role um, in th throughout the comprehensive planning process. Um, additionally, we continue to work with AECOM on the existing conditions report. They have pulled together, I can't tell you how many maps and just how much data has been pulled together on the existing conditions for St. Louis County. Um, and in May at your executive meeting, as we, we tentatively have planned for your ten, uh, executive meeting for um, them to be in town to present to you the existing conditions report. There's some really interested narratives that we've already been able to pull out as it pertains to um, the county's population plateau, the age of our housing stock, um, how and where we're investing our monies. Um, I think that there's some really, really great, well, really great narratives to talk about and to plan for coming out of this process. Um, that, that then sets us up for um, if this is where we are and the, we know that these are our opportunities um, to improve, uh, to start creating that buffet of options about how the county should move forward um, into, the, into the future. Um, public engagement is beginning this month. We are going to be doing both active and passive uh, engagement with this. So our passive engagement is going to include engagement stations at multiple county libraries. Um, the county health centers, uh, county recreation centers, as well as some Metro League stops. So we will have passive engagement stations in all council districts in St. Louis County. And we're also going to begin the active uh, public engagement. So um, that includes us going to tabling events and various things in person in the community in all seven council districts through the month of April and May. And we will give to you all and send to you as soon as we have it ready, uh, a map and a schedule with all of those events that planning staff will be at. So that way, if you're in the, if you're in the neighborhood or something interests you, you can stop by and say hi um, and you know, listen if, as we talk to residents um, and keep you all abreast of all of those sorts of things. The first thing we're doing is we will be at Earth Day Festival that is in the city, but uh, there's gonna be a very heavy uh, county contingent there. And we know that we plan of county residents going there. Um, so, and also, so you should know, is that our statistically valid survey 
we are sending that out to more than 10,000 residents in St. Louis County um, with the expectation and hope that over the next six weeks, we will get at least a thousand responses to help us create that statistically valid survey. And additionally, online, we will have a, an, a survey, a, an all call survey as well. So we're trying to hit as many people as possible to hear as many perspectives as possible um, as we put all of this work together. So with that, I'd love to hear if you have any questions or anything you'd like to chat about. Anyone? All right. Um, anything else to add, Jacob? I don't think so. Uh, so our next meeting will be public hearing April 22nd. Um, it will not be nearly as long as the last public hearing. I think it'll be much easier petitions. It will not be nearly as late uh, uh, late on this next one. So our next one will, uh, I think our, our the best the best thing about the next one will be uh, meeting Urveta and will uh, Urveta in person um, and, and just uh, sharing some time in person together. All right, thank you. Very uh, good. Seeing nothing else, we need a motion to adjourn. So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. We have a second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. And uh, be safe, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See y'all soon. Thank you. Thank you.